Welcome to Chugging Along, I'm Tim. And I'm Sam. So thank you very much for your comments on our last video where we did some trading at the IWA Canalway Cavalcade in Little Venice, central London. In this week's video, we're back to cruising on our Halston Junction to London series as we chug through Milton Keynes. It's a sprawling 55 square mile settlement which was mostly built in the 20th century. The Grand Union Canal was completed in the 1800s and it goes right through the middle of the town. And we're going to show you why we think it's a practical place to continuously cruise as a narrow boater. But practicalities aside, has all of the old charm of the canal been lost to concrete? So you want to stick around this video as we chug over another aqueduct, we see two beautiful unique boats and we finish with our Stoke Hammond Village Diaries. Right, so let's get into today's cruise. We start at the Galleon Pub in Wolverton where we went for pies the evening before with Henry, Abby and Kai. Look at our pet spider that gets knocked out of his home every time Chuggles the Frog gets into position. Warburton is a nice place to moor. It has its own railway station to get into the centre of MK, but if you're up to it, riding your bike on the towpath is also a decent scenic option. We would love these gold solar panel brackets to match our window frames. First time we've ever seen them. These mooring spots are nearby the railway station and a couple of supermarkets. Time for the obligatory heron shot. We like this mural. We think it's dedicated to the use of the railways during World War II. If anyone knows, please comment below. We always love an aqueduct. Just north of here is the traditional style iron trunk aqueduct. This is the modern new Bradwell aqueduct, which we read was completed in 1991, replacing the eight arches. This is a very Milton Keynes moment, flying over a wide, uncongested road, surrounded by trees in a simple concrete style. Milton Keynes isn't lock heavy at all giving us an uninterrupted cruise for hours. There are so many mooring spots and it's busy in places, but when we were there, the availability was very good. This is near the Linford Nature Reserve in the north of the town, which is really peaceful. From the evidence that we gained, we were thinking for someone working in Milton Keynes, continuous cruising up and down the area is a great option for people who need to stay in a certain place. 
You've got plenty of facilities, chandleries, lock free cruising, supermarkets, peaceful moorings, and you're only ever a cycle or cruise away from the town centre. Look at what we found here, an official Manchester United narrowboat. We've heard when they're playing away and one of their players gets sent off as punishment, that player has to cruise back single-handedly to Manchester on this vessel, the slow way. We were now in a part of the world where you see a lot more liverboard wide beams. Campbell Park is the closest mooring area to the centre of the town. This is Campbell Wharf Marina, where a lot of construction was going on. We were impressed with the Triangular Bridge. It will be interesting to see what comes of these moorings when construction is complete. This grey GRP cruiser looks like it has a mohawk. Milton Keynes Marina is very close to the University Hospital. We think they did a decent job preserving the canal history in Milton Keynes. Most of the traditional bridges are still intact and the towpaths are nice and green. It's a great place for the local residents to exercise and relax. Here's a boat called Badger, but it's not Jam Cam and Cam, sadly. We passed the Plough Pub, then went under the A5.
We were now in the south of the town. We think the northern section overall was nicer, but this is some really cool graffiti. We had the Red Line pub in our sights, which meant we had made it to Fenny Stratford, the southern point of Milton Keynes. The locals at the pub helped us out with the swing bridge. We then did our first lock of the day and topped up our water tank afterwards. My favourite colour is yellow, so obviously I'm a big fan of this boat. We were now back in the countryside, but we needed some diesel. We'd heard good things about Willow Bridge Boatyard, so we decided to stop off there. After we topped up our tank, we saw this boat in the yard. It was in a gothic style, which really caught our eye. We got something. Oh no! Oh. We thought this magnet fisherman had found his fortune, but sadly, it was nothing. It had been a long day and shortly after passing this Dutch barge style wide beam we made it to Stoke Hammond Lock which we chugged up with another boat. We then found a mooring nearby which we absolutely loved. Great views and a peaceful setting. I went for a wander in the village so here are our Stoke Hammond diaries.
that's the end of today's cruise and uh, what do you think of Milton Keynes and would you like to live there as a continuous cruiser? Let us know in the comments section below. But now Tim, it's over to you for those all important cruising statistics. Okay, thank you very much <laughs> Sam. Right, let's have a look, see what we did. So in this video we did 13 miles and it was just the two locks and we did that all in six hours, thus giving us a healthy average speed of 2.2 miles an hour. That now brings our trip average up to 1.58 miles an hour. We're trying to get to London on a 1.5. We're on track at the moment, but Lock Vegas is fastly approaching. And that now means we've done 159 out of the 205 miles to London. So join us next week as we continue our journey to London, chugging through Leighton Buzzard, and we'll show you our Tring Diaries. Will it rank highly in our favourite canal town? <laughs> so thank you very much for watching this video all the way to the end. And remember, no matter what you do in life, you've got to keep chugging.